Hey guys, welcome back. This week I want to take a quick look at trepanning, the machining type, not the brain surgery type, which is also conveniently called trepanning, and it's almost identical in every way, minus the brain surgery bit. If you think I'm making this up, I promise you I am not, and researching this topic has got to be one of the strangest things I've ever done. But by the end of the video, we should be good to go, whether it is machining or brain surgery that we need to do. Now to put it simply, trepanning is just another method of making holes in workpieces, with the biggest difference being that it's a more efficient use of metal than compared to drilling or boring. Now the reason for this is I'll be looking to make up two or three stepper motor plates, and each of them are going to have a 38-ish millimeter hole in them, and that's going to be to locate the stepper motor. Now, when I made this one a long time ago, I'm pretty sure the method that I used to make it was to simply use a hole saw before I bored it to size. And you know, hole saws in aluminium seem to work just fine enough, but they are pretty lousy when it comes to steel plates, and it really does take the life out of them, even when I do use the carbide tip ones, although in fairness, hole saws really aren't designed for cutting thick plate steel. Now I could simply drill and bore them out to size, which is a method that I've done quite a lot, but unfortunately it's not a hugely fast method, especially when I'm using the boring head on the milling machine, and the material wise it is a pretty big waste because all of that material is being turned into chips. And that effectively is where trepanning comes in, because instead of turning all that material into chips, why not instead machine out a thin groove in the material and effectively part out or core the material away. Doing it this way in theory should be a lot quicker and we won't be wasting that centre material. Step number one then is to make a cutter, which I'm going to be making from high speed steel. I'll remove the bulk of the material with an angle grinder before moving over to the bench grinder. Now to do this, I'll start off by making a normal parting tool. I'll now start to grind extra clearance and relief on that outer edge. Since we're going to be parting in a circular groove so to speak, the outside is going to need to be relieved in order not to grind or I guess rub up against the channel. And I'm sure it's pretty obvious, but we will need to adjust the clearance that we do need to grind in depending on the diameter that we are trepanning. A smaller circle is going to need a lot more clearance than a larger one. I've also ground in some positive rake to help it cut, but apart from that, it is a pretty basic tool and I think we should be good to go. I'll do the first test in aluminium since I've never done this before and I want to take it easy the first time round. I'll be running this at about 300 RPM and I will be needing a lot of cutting oil. Well first thoughts and it is running pretty smoothly. If this was thin plate, maybe 3 to 6 millimeters, this would cut any size hole really quickly. This piece here is about 10 to 12 millimeters, and it is taking its time. Now as I get closer in, you can see a few things that I will need to make sure that I don't do again. The tool isn't ground deep enough and it is starting to rub on the inside of that puck and it is starting to round it off. And by the looks of things, I didn't quite grind in enough clearance on the outside either and it has rubbed a little bit. But for a first run, I think that was pretty good. You know, it only took about 3 minutes to punch all the way through, which is a lot quicker than drilling and boring. Plus I now have that puck left over which I can use for other projects. Now I did do the trepanning slightly undersized, so I can now take a boring bar and then bore it to its final size. All in all, I'm really impressed with that. You know, I probably wouldn't bother trepanning anything less than 38mm, but I can see this working great for larger stuff. 
For example, this is a go-kart sprocket, and I've been meaning to make up a replacement one for a long time. What I can see myself doing is mounting a big piece of plate to the lathe and using a japanning tool to cut the outside out as well as cut out the inside. I also read that this method was great for creating rings because you can simply japan out a ring and then part it off. Doing it this way means you don't waste all that much stock material. For what it's worth, I think this is a really good method for creating rings. But, and there always is a but, if you have a smaller lathe like I do, japanning steel can be very difficult to do. Plastic and aluminium are always easy, but steel is the real test. Now in doing so, I've personally found it very difficult to balance the correct tool cutter width versus getting it to properly cut. The first tools that I made were a little bit too wide because I wanted them to be a bit thicker and stronger for cutting steel, and unfortunately, that chattered like crazy. So what I had to do was I had to take it back and then slim it down on the bench grinder in order to get it to be able to cut. However, that does result in a much weaker tool. And any downwards movement or flex in the tool or the tool holder or the compound rest is going to result in the tool getting pulled into the work and will ultimately snap. Now obviously this won't happen in a normal parting operation because the tool can simply be pushed away or it will chatter and then you can simply pull the tool back but here it's going to get pulled into the work and that is always going to guarantee in the tool snapping. And unfortunately when the tool snaps you pretty much always have to re-grind it from scratch. That's not to say that it can't work or that you can't do it because I was able to do it eventually, but it can be very unforgiving to do, especially on a small lathe. It's certainly not what I was hoping for because I am looking for a method of helping me to create some bodies for some die wrenches, and I thought that this method might work, but ultimately, at least for small stuff in steel, this isn't the method that I'm going to go with. I guess I can always use the deming bits, but they aren't all that fast and they always require a fair amount of cleanup. Now I was going to leave it there, but then I remembered being recommended annular cutters a while back and supposedly they are like hole saws but made for metal and they perform a lot better. And unlike most hole saws, they are made of proper high speed steel. Now I have seen them used before, but I haven't personally used them, but fingers crossed I hope these work because these ones here weren't cheap. These ones here were about $140 in total, so I do hope that they work. First things first though, I do need to make up a holder. I am aware that I can hold these in a 3 quarter inch collet, but a proper holder is the better way to go. Doing it this way means I can make use of the weld and shank flats. You know, that should be a better hold on the tool, and it should be a lot easier and quicker to swap between cutters. Plus having a holder will allow me to have a pin to help me locate the position of the tool, and it should help push the puck out of the end of the cutter once it's finished cutting. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set the lathe up to cut a Morse 3 taper and then I'll get a piece of steel turned down.
The taper doesn't extend all the way, so I'll replicate it here too. Now cutting the taper on the compound can be pretty tedious, so I'll always make use of a cordless drill to speed things up. I'll then clean up the taper and then do a test fit. And thankfully the fit is really solid. You know, I can't see any run out on the taper sleeve. Now the taper is almost bottoming out on the front, so I'll go ahead and relieve it out a little bit more just to make sure it doesn't bottom out once I add a drawbar. I'll then drill out the end and then tap it for the drawbar. With the Morse taper now done, I can now do the rest of the lathe work with it held in the spindle nose. It's a lot quicker and easier to set it up this way than to have to set it up in the forejaw. I'll first get a quarter inch hole drilled through the center, but not all the way through. This will be for the pin which I spoke about earlier, and it will be spring loaded. Now I would have liked to ream this hole to size, but unfortunately I don't have a quarter inch ream, so a drilled hole is going to have to work, at least for the moment. I'll now take advantage of the center being drilled out by counterboring to the depth of the annular cutter shank. The end mill that I'm using isn't center cutting. I'll then come in with a boring bar to create a flat bottomed hole. Now since my brain and all my measuring tools work in metric only, I'll set the tool diameter in metric and then I'll use the DRO to simply convert it to imperial for me. Now I'm aiming to get this right on 3 quarter inches. I don't want this to be any more than 10 microns over, otherwise I am going to experience a bit of run out. And that is about as good of a fit as I could ask for. I can't see any run out in the cutter and that is a really good look. I will now get it in the milling machine and I'll drill three holes for the grub screws. Two of them are going to be for holding the cutter in place and one of them is going to be for retaining the pin. I don't know about you, but that is a pretty nice looking cutter. For about half an hour's work, I think it's come out looking really good. But as it is at the moment, it's only going to be good enough for lathe work. For mill work, I really am going to need that pin. So that's what we need to make up next. Now I was getting ready to turn down some silver steel to quarter inch, but as it turns out, I had some quarter inch rod laying about, which I was able to get into the lathe and then turn the end down to a point. Why I have quarter inch rod, I have no idea, but I'm very happy that I did. I'll then get it in the milling machine and mill in a flat of one side, and that's going to stop the spring from pushing the pin out. Once I add the grub screw, that should be enough to retain it. Now the pin is going to be rubbing up against the work as it spins, so if you are worried about it galling or leaving marks on the workpiece, you can always add some cutting oil or harden it to prevent any galling. Let's see if it works. 
I'll first test it out in the milling machine. I'm gonna test it out on some half inch steel plate with the 25 millimeter cutter. Once again, the run out looks to be pretty minimal. There might be a bit too much run out on the pin, but I can always correct that in the future. Now I really wasn't expecting a whole lot here because the motor that I'm using is not very efficient at low RPMs, but the annual cutter was really blowing me away with just how well it was cutting. I think the largest I can do with the Deming bit is about 17mm and that's with multiple pilot holes, but here at 25mm the annual cutter is just chewing through this steel. The only real downside is the bird nesting of the chips, but that is very manageable. And once it broke through, the pin did its job of pushing the puck out. And I've got to say, that is just an amazing finish left on that hole. Compared to a drill or a hole saw, that finish is just fantastic. The next thing I'll do is test it out on the lathe. But before I do that, I'll remove the pin. I don't want the pin to eject the puck with the lathe jaw still running, because it could shoot the puck out at me. What I'm testing on is a 25mm long piece of 1020 steel and the annual cutter is just tearing through it. You know, in fact, if you time it from start to finish, including the time it took me to remove the swarf, it took 1 minute and 13 seconds to cut all the way through, which is just crazy fast for this size of hole. And I've got to say once again, that surface finish on the hole is just fantastic. Since I was curious, I went back and did the exact same cut with a 25mm Deming bit. I did a 10mm pilot and then I followed it up with a 25mm cutter. In total, it took about 5 minutes to do it and the surface finish in the hole was a whole lot worse. I also quickly looked at using these tools to do counterboring, but due to the nature of the cutting edge, they do leave a very deep V groove at the bottom of the bore, which would need cleaning up. All in all in the future, I think for holes that are ranging from 18mm all the way up to 2 inches, I'm probably going to be relying on annular cutters. They are certainly a bit more pricey to buy, but they are certainly worth it. To everyone who has been recommending these to me, thank you very much because this is going to be a big game changer. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. I know this was more a experimental video because I haven't done all these methods before, but it was a good chance to learn and I hope you enjoyed learning it alongside me. And apart from that, have fun machining, have fun performing brain surgery, see you next week.